Hey there, today I want to share with you a fun little project I did to connect a Nabu keyboard to a Mac or PC over USB using a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, like a lot of people, I caught the Nabu bug after learning about it on Adrian's Digital Basement back in November of 2022. Uh, I just couldn't uh, miss out on the opportunity to get my hands on an obscure uh, new old stock Z80 based computer. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the Nabu PC itself. There are plenty of resources available for that some of which I've linked to in the description below. Uh, but what I want to talk about here is the Nibu keyboard. So uh, the Nibu keyboard actually has a pretty standard US layout, but there are some special keys. There's the SIM keys, the pause key, the TV Nibu key, and the yes, no, and paging keys. Uh, the case is molded plastic, but the keyboard um, has some heft. There's a substantial steel plate that supports the PCB that in turn holds the key switches. And speaking of those key switches, they are very high quality ALP switches that have a really nice feel and a very satisfying ping when you type on them. So there are three ports on the back. The first is a six pin DIN connector that carries power from the um, NABU PC to the keyboard as well as the serial data back from the keyboard to the NABU. Um, the, the serial port's physical layer is RS422 and it runs at 6,991 bits per second and uses eight data bits, no parity and one stop bit. There are also two 9-pin joystick ports that are compatible with garden variety Atari joysticks, as well as um, unpopulated footprints for two additional joystick ports on, and their associated circuitry that's over on the other end of the PCB. However, there are no provisions for those in the case. Um, now, it's not clear if these ports are compatible with Atari paddles. There is an analog to digital converter I see in the keyboard, um, but I haven't fully traced out its connections yet to try to figure out uh, what it's used for. There does not appear to be provision for those paddles in the keyboard protocol, but there's also uh, a bunch of unused code, so maybe. Anyway, uh, it's definitely something that would uh, sort of be worth investigating in the future. Now, the whole thing is controlled by a Motorola 6803 microcontroller, and if you're wondering why the baud rate is so weird, it's that guy right there. Um, just as with the NABU PC itself, all the clocks um, and the keyboard are derived from the NTSC color subcarrier frequency. Right, so looking at the USB adapter circuit, obviously um, there's a Pi Pico um, that provides the brains of the operation. I selected the Pico because it has more than enough GPIOs, uh, it has native USB, and it has two UARTs. Now one of those UARTs is used as a console for informational and debug output, and the other is used to receive data from the keyboard. Uh, communication with the keyboard is just one direction, so um, there's no sending commands to the keyboard or anything like that, so there's uh, just the receive pin of the second UART is used. Um, the adapter has three power rails. <clears throat> so there is a nine volt power rail provided by uh, an external power supply, and that's used to provide power to the keyboard, which draws a little over 300 milliamps just on its own and has its own five volt regulator on board. There's a five volt rail that's provided by the USB connection to the host, and there's a 3.3 volt rail, uh, which is provided by a regulator on board the Pico. There's a small power MOSFET on the low side of the 9 volt rail, which is connected to one of the Pico's GPIO pins, and that allows us to control power to the keyboard. And there's a series diode that provides reverse polarity protection just in case you happen to connect the wrong kind of power brick. Um, I used a 75176 differential bus transceiver to convert the RS422 serial input from the keyboard to a TTL compatible signal, and then a 74LVC245 bus transceiver. Uh, to level shift that signal down to a 3.3 volt logic level that's compatible with the Pico. Yeah, I know it's uh, it's totally overkill to use a 74 LBC 245 for this, but I had a bunch of them on hand, and so that's what I used. And as far as connectors go, um, there are some pin headers for the console UART and a debug enable jumper, as well as a six pin DIN connector uh, for the NABU keyboard cable and a center positive DC barrel jack that connects the external nine volt power supply the Pico's onboard USB connector is used for the host connection. Right, so here is the circuit laid out on our breadboard. Those blue, white, red, and black wires you see uh, that go off to a, a panel mount six pin DIN jack that's just outside the frame. And this is the setup I used when I was writing the firmware. So this here is a block diagram that shows the control flow of the firmware. Uh, the keyboard uh, data input task over there on the right uh, actually runs on the second core of the Pico's microcontroller. 
And I did it this way to make sure that nothing would get in the way of receiving data from the keyboard. Um, you know, USB protocol processing and all that other stuff takes up cycles, and I don't want to drop bytes from the keyboard when you're in, um, you know, a crazy game of Pac-Man or Qubit or something. Um, and so that's why I did it this way. Um, the keyboard health check uh, task there ensures that um, we've received data from the keyboard in sort of a timely manner. It's like a watchdog timer. Um, so the, the Nambu keyboard sends a ping message about every 3.7 seconds, and the health check task generates uh, a warning if it hasn't heard from the keyboard within five seconds. So um, if the keyboard misses two of those health check intervals, um, then it's rebooted by cycling its power. And then the keyboard also sends uh, error codes as part of its protocol, and if we receive one of the fatal error codes, we reboot the keyboard in that case as well. All right, so the hit report generation task um, takes the, the data um, in queued by the, by the keyboard data input task, pulls it out of the appropriate queues, and then generates uh, the HID, uh, HID reports uh, for those events. So the, the keyboard doesn't generate individual key down and key up events for most of the keys. Instead, yeah, it generates ASCII codes, and it processes the shift caps lock and control modifiers just all on its own. Um, the keyboard also does the auto repeat for those keys. So holding down a key results in a, a repeating stream of that key's ASCII code that gets faster the longer you hold it down until you release it. So um, for each of those ASCII codes, the HID, the HID report task um, has to take those ASCII codes and generate a sequence of HID reports for each key. Um, so the, the HID reports that... Um, are generated by TinyUSB, which is the USB stack that's included with the Pico SDK, uh, consists of eight bytes for the keyboard. Uh, the first byte uh, contains a bit mask of the modifier keys, so the control, uh, shift, alt, and meta, and there's like one bit for each of the left and right. And then there's a second byte that's an OEM reserve field and should always be filled in a zero. And then the remaining six bytes are the hid key codes. So let's take a look at what happens when we get a capital letter A, which is ASCII code hex 41 from the keyboard. So um, we have to think about how you would actually type that key um, and think about the sequence that those keys would be, um, would be typed in, would be depressed in. And so we have to send a hit report for each of those key combinations that would appear in that sequence. So the first key that would be pressed is the shift key. So we send out a report with just the shift modifier. Next, the A key would be pressed, so we send out a report with a shift modifier plus the A key. Uh, next, the A key would be released, so we send out another report with just the shift modifier. And then finally, we would release the shift key, and so um, we send out an empty report. So all of these key sequences are encoded in a table in the firmware, and the HID report generation task just implements a simple state machine that steps through them. There are a couple of uh, keys that do generate their own individual key down and key up events that aren't affected by the shift caps lock and control keys. Um, first of all, the arrow keys, um, and those have their own direct equivalents in the HID protocol. Then there's the paging keys, which we map to page up and page down. The SIM keys, uh, I map those to meta, uh, which is the Windows key or on the Mac, it's um, called the command key. The TV Nabu key um, got mapped to Alt, which is called Option on the Mac. And then there's the Pause key. That actually has a direct equivalent in the HID protocol, but I'm not really sure how useful it is in the grand scheme of things for this particular application. And then there's the Yes key, which is used for the vertical bar or pipe symbol, and the No key, which is used for the backslash symbol. Now, um, on a regular USB keyboard, the vertical bar is actually shift and backslash together, but since the modifier keys don't work with these special keys, I have to use two separate keys for these symbols. Um, unfortunately, this also leaves out the Grav symbol and its shifted sibling, the tilde. Uh, I haven't quite decided how I want to handle that yet, so if you have suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Okay, so joystick reports are a little simpler. Um, TinyUSB uses 11-byte reports for the gamepads. And the first six bytes are just deltas for the analog controls, which we just report as zero. The next byte is an event code for the hat switch or D-pad. Um, and that's how we report the joystick directional data. And then finally, there is a 32-bit button mask field and we report the joystick fire button as button A or button zero. Right, so after I had it all working, I laid it out um, on a PCB in KiCad. And then I sent the Gerbers off to PCB way for fabrication. 
This is the first version of the board and it actually had a silly mistake in the RS422 circuit, which on this board I fixed um, with just a couple of cut traces and bodge wires. I've actually since fixed uh, the design files and had a new batch of PCBs made and I built one of those up the other day and it worked perfectly. Right, so I think we are ready for a shaky handheld camera demo. Okay, welcome to my uh, noisy and messy garage where you get to get a demo of my NABU to USB keyboard adapter right there. Um, got an Atari joystick, plug it into the back of the keyboard, and um, I've got my ThinkPad um, that's running NetBSC here. Uh, I use that because I've got lots of really great uh, debugging tools um, at, uh, uh, at my disposal. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug the adapter in the USB port. And you can see that the device appears. We have um, a USB keyboard and two generic hit devices, which are the game pads. And if I go down here, I can return on the keyboard and we see the uh, see the the input going to the ThinkPad so you know I can just type something here something pretty basic obviously that's not going to do anything um, and I can also demonstrate the uh, the gamepad functionality here. So I just uh, got this kind of all pre can ready to go. So I hit, right now what I'm doing is I'm dumping the HID reports for the gamepad hat switch. And so if I move the joystick, you can see the, uh, the new events come. You get an event for when it uh, returns to the home position and when it uh, goes to one of the directions. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna get back to the uh, to the presentation now and let you guys stop listening to that whining sound from my uh, network switch fan. All right, I guess that's it. Um, you can find all the details on GitHub, which I've also linked below. And uh, please let me know what you think about this project by leaving uh, any comments below as well. I'd really love to hear your feedback as well as uh, any suggestions for other um, interesting Nabu adjacent projects uh, that I could do in the future. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, happy nabooing, and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.